الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علیہ و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد ایو الاحباب Continue on our study of Shara Sunnah by Imam Babahari Rahimahullah Ta'ala. We reached the portion of the treaties, which is the sixth point, where Imam Babahari said, Rahmatullah alayhi, وَعْلَمْ إِنَّ النَّاسِ لَمْ يَتَّدْعُوا بِدْعَةٍ قَتْ حتى تركوا من السنة مثلها فاحذر المحدثات من الأمور فإن كل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة وأهلها في النار إمام بابا هاري said رحمه الله تعالى He said know that the people never introduce an innovation until they abandon its like from the sunnah So beware of newly invented matters Since every newly invented matter is an innovation and every innovation is misguidance and misguidance and its people are in the fire. So Imam Baba Hari Rahimullah Ta'ala here illustrated for us the danger of bid'ah, the danger of it. And so some people get upset in fact many people become upset when you talk about issues of bid'ah. But in fact, we should be the exact opposite. Not that we crave to talk about it only, but we should be realize that that's an important aspect of the deen, is preserving the religion from outside influences. Meaning practices that are un-Islamic. Whether that be an increase in acts of worship, or a nullification of acts of worship, or however, whatever type of bid'ah, that may uh, that someone may innovate قال الشيخ ربي حفظ الله تعالى the sheikh said in explaining this point of Imam Baba Hari he said هذا كلام حق وواقع فكم ترك أهل البدع من النصوص القرآنية والنبوية صرفهم عنها بدعهم وضلالاتهم فالذين لم يثبتوا صفات الله العظيمة الثابتة بأدلة كثيرة من الكتاب والسنة استعدوا استعدوا عنها بتعتيل الصفات العظيمة The Sheikh said حفظ الله تعالى He said that that statement of Imam Barbahari is the truth and it's the reality. How many people from the people of innovation, Ahl Bida, have left the te- the Quranic text and the textual the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? in exchange for bid'ah or due to their bid'ah due to their innovation and their misguidance so those people who do not affirm the sifat of Allah the azim sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are affirmed with a lot of evidence from the Quran and the sunnah then what happens to them is they begin to negate those great sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says, فَمِثْلًا ذَهَبَ أَهْلَ تَعْتِيلِ إِلَىٰ أَنَّ اللَّهَ فِي كُلِّ مَكَانِ فَتَرَكُوا عَشَرَاتَ لَدِلَّةِ أَلَّتِي تَثْبَتْ عَلُوِ اللَّهِ وَأَسْتَوَاهُ عَلَىٰ عَرْشِهِ وَأَدَىٰ هَذَا الْتَعْتِيلِ بكثير منهم إلى قولي بالحلول وإلى القولي بوحدة الوجود. The Sheikh said, "حفظ الله تعالى." He said, "For example, many of the people who negate 
from the people of Ahl Ta'til, the people who negate the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they believe due to their ta'til, due to the fact that they negate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat, then they believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in fi kulli makan, that Allah is everywhere. And they leave the uh, tens of nasus of text which affirm that Allah rolls his alu, that he's above, you know, the most high, and that he rose, like arose over his throne. And that ta'til, that negation from them, is from many of them, it leads some of them to, or many of them, to state that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one with his creation or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everywhere and in everything and of course these are false conce concepts and Ahl Sunnah is aware of that and you'll find this in the uh, discussed throughout this treaties and other treaties بِالْجَاهِ وَأَشْخَاصِ تَرَقُلْ تَوَصُلْ مَشْرُوعُ كَتَوَصُلْ بِأَسْمَاءِ اللَّهِ الْحُسْنَى وَصِفَاتِهِ الْعُلِيَى كَتَوَصُلْ وَكَتَوَصُلْ الْمُؤْمِنِ بِعَمَلِهِ الصَّالِحِ وَإِيمَانُهُ بِاللَّهِ And then the people, another example the Shaykh gave of people leaving a sunnah for the bid'ah, and these are more the more extreme cases, is he refers to the people who have fallen into innovation with regards to tawassal, with regards to seeking uh, seeking uh, seeking to draw nearer to Allah, and. He referred to the people who try to draw nearer to Allah through other people and through their status. Like many of the people, Ahl Bidah, they try through, they say, by the jah of the Prophet, وسلم, by his status, or by uh, their sheikhs or their marid or what have you or whoever they have bay'ah some of them the extreme Sufis and others that they try to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these means or through the dead or what have you you know they maybe they supplicate to them or, or what have you the various ways that they try to draw nearer to Allah And by doing this, they leave the mashroor tawassal, the tawassal drawing near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the legislated way, according to the sharia. Like, and then he gives examples, tawassal bil asma'i la al-husna wa sifati. By supplicating to Allah and drawing near to Allah by His divine names and His attributes and his most high attributes. Or, in another way, in another way, he said, كَتَوَصَلُ مُؤْمِنْ بِعَمَلِهِ الصَّالِحِ وَإِمَانِهِ Also, the, the way the believer, another type of tawassal mashroor, or the halal, or the lawful, a legislated tawassal, way of drawing near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is through, is the believer doing this through his good, his or her good deeds, their righteous deeds, or their uh, their iman, billah, their faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So supplicating to Allah and saying, Allah, if I did such and such for your sake, you know, that good deed that I did for your sake, please help me in this situation. This is tawassal mashroor. This tawassal, this drawing near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through one's good deeds or through their belief in Allah is mashroor. This is legislated. This draws you nearer to your Lord. And the opposite of that is what those people from Ahl Bid'ah do 
by trying to draw near to Allah through the dead or others. <coughs> then the Shaykh mentioned having Allah Ta'ala some of the extreme Sufiya like the Shadhiliya with Tijaniya that they went so far astray in their bid'ah that it went to shirk that they did a type of shirk and they then due to their ignorance they left the adhkar the supplications the correct supplications the supplications that are authenticated on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they left the sharia so this is the problem with bid'ah is you have a straight path for example Surat al-Mustaqim. This is an example. Meaning Kitab al-Sunnah. But, the path of Kitab al-Sunnah. But then you have people who insist on going to the right or to the left of that path. Believing they have a shortcut. But as you see, even in going to the right, it does not lead you to the same destination. This is taking you up here somewhere, and this is taking you over here somewhere. Okay? So it's leading you away from the straight path. It's leading you away. So they've replaced something from the sunnah which tells you, you know, make adhkar to Allah. Make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and supplicate to Allah. But by replacing it, by supplicating to the dead, or coming up with new adhkar that are not only not mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, but they also have some shirkiyat or bid'ah that you're beginning to make adhkar and make resemblance between Allah and His creation or between your shaykh and Allah Azza wa Jal or giving your shaykh a higher status or even a high status or even trying to compare he, him to Allah Azza wa Jal this is where you get into the shirkiyat. So it shows that by leaving a sunnah and replacing it, with, you, you, you rep, they begin to replace it with a bid'ah and it only leads you further astray. It doesn't take you up here, but it leads you astray. This is the example of bid'ah and how it, and, and by leaving a, a sunnah and going to bid'ah, replacing it with bid'ah, how this leads you further and further astray. And this is what many of those sects do. وَعِيَادِ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ قَالَ الشَّيْخِ الْإِسْلَامِ بِنْ تَيْمِيَةِ رَحِيمَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فِي هَذَا الْمَعْنَى وَهَكَذَا أَهْلَ بِدَعَ لَا تَجِدُ أَهَدًا تَرْكْ بَعَدَ السُنَّةِ أَلَتِي يَجِبُ تَصْدِيكْ بِهَا وَعَمْلُ إِلَّا وَقَعَ فِي الْبِدَعَ وَلَا تَجِدُ صَاحِبَ الْبِدَعَةِ إِلَّا تَرْكَ شَيْءٍ مِنَ السُنَّةِ كَمَا جَاءَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ مَا ابْتَدَعَ قَوْمٍ بِدْعَةٍ إِلَّا تَرَكُوا مِنْ سُنَّةِ مِثْلَهَا رواه إمام أحمد So uh, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam رحمه الله تعالى said He said, and likewise, the people of innovation that you won't find anyone from amongst them who has left something, some of the sunnah which is an obligation to believe and practice, except that they fell into bid'ah. By leaving a sunnah, they, the, the people fell into bid'ah. And you won't find a person of innovation, except that they have left something from the sunnah. As it was mentioned, then he brings his evidence for saying this. He said, "Kama jafil hadith," as it was mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, ruahu Imam Ahmed, where he said, "Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu alayhi." Ma abtada qoman bid'atin illa taraku min sunnah mithliha. That uh, a people have not uh, fallen into or innovated except after leaving something from the sunnah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَمَنْ يَعِيشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّذْ لَهُ شَيْطَانٍ فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
في كتابه الكريم إن سورة زخرف قال سبحانه إن آية 36 he said and whosoever turns away blindly from the remembrance of the most gracious we appoint for him a shaitan to be a companion to him so as the shaykh is using this evidence shaykh al-islam ibn taymiyyah or perhaps this could be this is from the shaykh uh use this as evidence to show that by leaving the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal, meaning the Quran and of course the Sunnah and those things which are mishroor, those things which are legislated by Quran and the Sunnah that you're leaving the good and, that, and falling into bid'ah, falling into that evil and Allah will appoint a companion for the person who does this so the shaitan is going to work to help lead you astray even more or the person who falls into this and may Allah protect us and forgive us of our many shortcomings and protect us from any and all forms of innovation and sinfulness then the shaykh said Allah ta'ala He mentioned another ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَقَالَ تَعَالَى فَمَنْ اتَّبَعَ هُدَى فَمَنْ اتَّبَعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا يُذِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى وَمَنْ أَعْرِضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً بَنْقَى وَنَحْشِرُهُ وَنَحْشِرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَعْمَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Taha He says to Barak wa ta'ala Whoever follows my guidance then they will not be misguided nor will they become uh, sad or distressed and whoever disregards my remembrance you know leaves off remembering me then he will live a lowly uh, existence or life and he will be gathered together on the day of judgment blind he will be gathered together blind, resurrected blind on the day of judgment وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَقَالَ اتَّبْعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَلَا تَتَّبْعُوا مِنْ دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاءِ قَلِيلٌ مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في سورة الأعراف he says, Subhana, and they follow, or, or, or Allah orders us, ittiba'u, uh, follow what has been revealed to you from your Lord. And do not follow other than it from amongst the protectors. Few of them uh, remember are, are are those people who who reflect. So then the Sheikh says, "For Amr bi ittiba ma anzala wa naha amma yadad dalika wa hu ittiba al auliya min dunihi. For men lam yattiba ahaduhuma ittiba akhir." So the Sheikh says, bringing some of the wisdom from this ayat regarding this issue of leaving a sunnah and replacing it with a bid'ah, he says that he uh, commanded, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded to follow what he revealed and avoid what uh, the opposite of that and those things he prohibited. And that is following protectors or supporters other than him so whoever does not follow uh, whoever f does not follow one of the uh, one of them follows the other 
meaning that you can't have both. You either will follow Ar-Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments, and stay away from his prohibitions, and avoid following the awliya of the shaitan, or you'll do the opposite. Meaning that the sunnah and the and bid'ah contradict one another. So you can't say that you're praying Salat al-Fajr correctly, which is two rakat, but you've made it three rakat, for example. Or you can't say you follow the minhaj of the salaf, but yet you are in you are uh, you believe in making takfir of all the Muslim governments and all the Muslim leaders and anyone who doesn't follow your methodology or madhab. So this is not the Sabila Mu'mineen, nor is that the Sabila Sunnah. But in fact, that is replacing something from the Sunnah with something of bid'ah. And this is the main point of this mas'ala that Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala had mentioned. Another faida the Shaykh mentioned, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentioned also th- what was narrated, Ruahu Darmi fi Musnadihi, Qala Akhbarana Abu Mughira, Qala Hadathana Uzai, An Hassan, Qal Mabtada Qomin Bidatin fi Dinihim illa Naza Allahum in Sunnatihim Mithlaha. Thummala yu idaha ilayhim ila yomil qiyama. So this is a narration of our salaf. Rahimahumullah and Hassan who said that a people did not innovate in their religion except that Allah took from them something from the Sunnah. Then he did not return it to them or he does not return it to them until the day of judgment. This shows us the danger of bid'ah, that you risk having not just those deeds related to bid'ah not being accepted, but having your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala leave you on that path of dalal. That's why we have to be honest. We have to seek guidance. We have to refrain from anything that is doubtful with regards to uh, the religion. And then in another narration, and this shows the madhab of the salaf of this ummah, وَقَوْلُوا فَحْذَرَ مُحْدَثَاتِ مِنَ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلُّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَ وَكُلُّ بِدَّةٍ دَلَالَ وَدَلَالَةً وَأَهْلَهَا فِي النَّارِ and this is a statement of Imam Uzai as it was Ruahu ala lakai fi sharas asul al ahl sunnah. He said, and this shows again the madhab of the salaf, he said, then beware of newly innovated matters, newly innovated matters. For every newly innovated matter is a bid'ah. Or an innovation. What every bid'ah, every innovation, or every bid'ah is misguidance. And misguidance and its people are in the fire. Showing us that the statement that Imam Baba Hadi said in the beginning of this, in this fiqra, was not just his statement, but it's coming from the athar of the salaf, of those who preceded him. From the salaf of this ummah, the salaf of salih. Rahimahumullah ta'ala. From the Sahaba wa Tabi'een wa Taba'a Tabi'een. And we know the ahadith, the hadith, the many ahadith, but the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قَدْ تَرَقْتُمْ عَلَى بَيْضَى لَيْلَهَا كَالنَّهَارِهَا لَا يُزِيغْ عَنْهَا بَعْدِ إِلَّا هَالَكْ وَمَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ فِي سَيْرَى اِخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِمَا عَرَفْتُمْ مِنَ السُنَّةِ من سنتي وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين وعليكم بالطاعة وإن عبد هبشيا عضوا عليها بالنواجذ فإنما المؤمن كالجمل الأنف هيثما انقياد الانقياد then The Shaykh mentioned a hadith 
of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of Irbad ibn Sariya, and this is one of the narrations of the hadith, where the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, I've left you on that which is clear. It's night, it's like it's day. And no one goes astray after me except that they will be destroyed. So whoever lives from you, from amongst you, shall see many differences. Then it is upon you from what you know from my sunnah. And the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifat. And it is upon you, atta'a, obedience, in obedience to the leader. Wa'in Abdul Habashin, even if he was an Ethiopian slave. Excuse me. Akramakum Allah. Even if he was an Ethiopian slave, adhere to it with your molar teeth. For verily, the mu'min, the believer, is like the nose of the camel. Wherever it is pulled, it, uh, wherever it is attached to, then it follows, it is attached to. Meaning that the mu'min should be adhering to, because he's a mu'min, he's adhering to what? To the kitab wa sunnah. So he's latched on to the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's where he's headed. That's what he's upon. That's what Ahlul sunnah is on. But not unlike the people of bid'ah and desires who are attached to personalities. They're attached to their only their shaykh or their few shaykhs, few mashaykh, or their madhab, or their methodology, or whatever that differs with the foundation of the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So our allegiance, our adherence is to the Qur'an, to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one you worship, the one you'll be asked by, about those things in the grave you'll be asked by. You won't be asked about your imam and your madhab, because those things, those leaders and those scholars that we benefit from are, are a wasila. actually. They are a means for us to worship Allah better. So they should call us to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not to anything other than that. And they should call us to the madhab of the salaf of this ummah who were the best after the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. They were the best of this ummah, of this nation, of the nation that exists now, the best of them was the Sunnah, uh, was, the, uh, was the Salaf. And the dalil for this is the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. خير الناس قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, the best people is my generation. Then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Who's the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam's generation? The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ajma'een. And then after that, the tabi'een. And then after that, the itba'a tabi'een. Those are the best. They're the best of this ummah. And they preserved the sunnah. And they were the most knowledgeable about the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And they had the most fiqh fiddeen. And they had the best Suluk and minhaj and methodology. It comes from them. And may Allah bless them with tawfiq and following that path. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.